All right, here we go. Um, I think we're on episode four here. Yes. Of uh, Leger Manor. Um, In the grasp of the mold widow, I think is the. Oh, 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 there we are. Oh, no. A, that's a great uh, chapter header. Goodman Games needs to snatch you right up <laughs> off the street. <laughs> Rast of the mold mother. Yeah, so wait, man, the rat catcher was um let's see what happens when I try to do this on my screen. So you guys have access to the map on your own, but I'll be trying to kind of um manipulate it for the for the zoom situation here. So over in this part of the manor, we have Oivan the rat catcher um stuck under an old bed. Um, in a pitch black room because uh, Gabri, the uh, elf troubadour, <laughs> extinguished his candle in a pot of lard. Um, uh, Jasper, the forager, had just returned from trying to rescue his uh, puppy. Um, what was the puppy's name, Dean? Forrest. Forrest, the puppy. Who's still not rescued. Yeah, who's gone missing in the dark. Yeah, um, we will get him back. So this room is um, pitch black. Um, and underneath the bed, right before the, the dim candlelight was extinguished, um, a, a, a figure of a female figure draped in a strange sort of diaphanous yellow mold um, was grasping at Oyvan's ankles well, without making any sound at all, totally silent, except for like a scuffling sound on the floor. Um, so that um, is our main cliffhanger moment across the way, <clears throat> outside of the dining hall. Um, Ictrude and Robinet and Crespin together managed to um, actually Robinet managed to uh, send uh, the skeletal diners retreating into the darkness after oh, a right. um, an amazing uh, uh, I mean it was like a, a, a channeling of uh, the spirit of Donaviev almost um, intimidating these undead creatures to retreat so there's a moment of respite here on this side of the manor um, that's uh, Ictrude, the town constable, um, who is uh, backed up by Robinette, the um, farrier, mm -hmm. Crespin, the town crier, who is coming into his own as a, as a deputy here. That's right, the lieutenant. Um, Mark me, friends, I am but hurt. Alar, the scholar, who ma mainly was interested in drinking some holy water, I think. Tasting only, not, Tasting, not right. for me, not for me. And then Janon, the seer, who um, may be having a change of, of, of heart in terms of uh, <laughs> metaphysical um, belief systems. <clears throat> um, so I think uh, we're actually going to start with these guys. We're going to hold that cliffhanger of the, of the grass thing underneath the bed. Um, and uh, there's, um, I think Ictrude had said previously to sort of um, fight a defensive retreat, but now that Robinet has um, uh, has kind of uh, turned the skeletons, um, there is a moment of um, where you guys can catch your breath here. So, uh, and in the middle of that moment, who is the first to speak? In the dim, uh, flickering candlelight. A lard wants to look something up, Jason, using his book of uh, the you know mostly true history of uh, 1200 to 1350 in the village of Leger. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to look up how many, uh, Allard would like to look, uh, I would like to look up um, accounts of banquets in this place to, uh, you know, historical banquets, uh, balls they have held uh, to uh, get a sense of how many seats are at that long table that we can only see part of to therefore get a sense of how many skeletons might still be left assuming every seat was filled. Um, and I think we took down seven last time. All right. I'll, I'll so I want to. I want to burn a use of the book, uh, which I think I can do, and get maybe a plus. Yep, you get a plus one to. Um, well, you can either try to establish with that to say. Well, no, no, no. There's sorry. Oh. There is a no. There is a known answer to this. So you're actually trying to find answers. Yeah, I'm trying to find answers. Yeah. I, I, I want to find the the known answer, not yeah, to say there were only seven, because clearly some of them uh, retreated. So I know you guys are assiduously tracking your inventory items. <laughs> Who's got, who's, who is holding aloft the candles in this, uh, in this uh, room? Ictrude has candles, but she wasn't holding them. I thought it was my lieutenant. Yeah, yeah. okay, Crespin. That makes sense. We'll say Crespin is holding the candle. So then LR sort yeah. of steps closer to the candlelight in order to do that. Yep, the fine and true history of Leger, 1200 to 1285. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Uh, adjust as necessary. Um, 
Yeah, and so there's just a 2d6. Oh, right, and I must get a, I get a, I think a plus by burning the book. Yeah. Um, a book has five uses, now it has four, and I'm imagining, Jason, this is against intelligence, so yes. I get a plus two. I think plus one from the intelligence and plus one from burning the book, which now has four uses left. Great, make the roll. And uh, you guys cool with it? I put it on the screen? Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. Switch over. High dice rolls, no. Share dice rolls. All right, here we go. One, two. Us eight. So at eight or six? Well, six there, but plus two. It, it doesn't actually put the plus. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Oh, okay, so okay. Do the math in your Got head. it. So that's 2d6. Oh, interesting. So that's how it does it. It just shows the icon of the type of die. It doesn't show us the number that you rolled. The number. Right. It doesn't show you guys the number? It shows the total. Oh, okay. the it shows the total. Yeah. So, cited, and then sadly, the total is, is, is a raw six, but a modified eight. Okay, great. So you got an eight. Um, the judge's answer is cryptic or incomplete, but they'll tell you how to learn more. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> I, the way to learn more is obvious. There is um, there is a brief accounting of the, um, in fact, this particular author took great pleasure in apparently recording like quantities of furniture um, in various parts of the manor. And apparently there was a remodel of the dining hall in like 1282. <laughs> And, and he, in part of the account, he he mentions that that's happening and how um they're you know they're calling in special woodworkers for the chairs, but they, um but there's no there's no count on the total number of chairs after that remodel. Um, so uh, the only uh, way you'd be able to find out would be go deeper into that room. Painful, my friends. Uh, I think that uh, we saw. Uh, you know, I've heard that uh, uh, there were arms and armor in there on the walls. I have no doubt, since light is in short supply for us. There would be various candles on the tables and other lighting accoutrements. I su suggest we consider uh, whether it's worth it to push in. And um, before falling silent in contemplation, Allard would like to try to pour the holy water back into the uh, vessel that he was kindly given by uh, the uh, fortune teller um, because it's sure. just a thing. Forgot about our, our special holy water pour. Yeah, it was, the, it was the real magic of. That's right. That's the, right. The the line, the, right. the, yeah. the reloader. But Allard is not a person of tremendous uh, of faith, and uh, it just tastes a little minerally. And and frankly, I mean, no offense, but it was flat. You know, in the bubbles. <laughs> well, Ick, Ick Trude would like to. Uh, um, you know, she's hopeful that the skeletons are gone for good, and that we can go in and investigate that room, um, and so. Um, I beckon to Chris Bong with the candle. Come in, let's investigate. Janan says, uh, my clackers are in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, the old I need, clackers. I need my clackers to see the future. Okay. Uh, if you see them, to. pick them up. As right. Bong remembers on the right hand side as you know as you're going in so it'll be our left but the character's right uh there was like maybe a fireplace and some blades up there that got knocked down to the floor and and those would be nice to pass out to people so oh, that's right start pointy things so we got Ictrude in the lead who's coming who's coming next in my candle, candle. uh Chris Bong? i i gave over the jug of holy water to someone is that true you poured me a drink, Dean. Or oh, sorry, you poured. Uh, um, she poured uh, a lard, a, uh, a silver cup with uh, the holy water in it, but it, it wasn't magical for him. Oh, so he's pouring it back because he recognizes it's precious. But it, okay, it's so I'm thing. back up one, one use. Yeah, one so use. What are you at now? How many? Do you yeah, have? no, absolutely. I was at two uses. Now I'm at three <clears throat> uses. And I think that's the extent, right? Unless. Oh no! Wait, uh, uh, Roby Net has the um, the special jug. How many were in there, Bob? Oh, there so, could be a little backwash, so maybe it's two point five. <laughs> so the uh, the the jug that Roby Net has uh, ha currently has two. Okay. Okay. So you total you have a total of five uses between all of you. Okay. Great. Yeah, and there's there's it's right there's maybe one in the sensor, and then I can't I can't recall. Okay. All right, so you uh, make your way. Ictrude leads um, a cautious advance. Ictrude, uh, remind us of what you're carrying here. Uh, oh, so Ictrude is carrying both short, sword and shield. Verite, a real sword. And I get in line with everybody else. The okay. shield with the, 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 um, the sigil of Leger, right? The, the raven. Yes, correct. Crespin has, uh, Crespin has a candle in, in one hand and 
he thinks it's a great sword, but you know, it's probably not so hot, but uh, it was blessed by sister Cecile and uh, he's got the, and handed to him uh, by uh, his, his, uh, you know, um, aspirational figure of Ictrude yeah. and he's got his sword. And even though he's a bleeding, he's, he's, he's feeling it. Uh, so Jason, um, we are tasked with, with breaking the curse, right? Of the Leger Manor. And I mean, certainly the skeletons seem like a big part of that curse, but there was also, there was like a black, what was the it? The The ooze. Um, the ooze, the like. Frog. In, the, um, the, the spirit, the evil spirit that was supposed to inhabit these lands from time immemorial was something called Grenouille Noir. Um, uh, G-R-E-N-W-E-E-N-W-A-R. Is that you spell that? <laughs> Not the French spelling. Although we have a chance. You put that in the chat. That yeah, would be yeah. great. Um, and Does so someone have a bad formative class in French, early medieval French history that they're working through at the moment? <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, I'll so put it in there right now. I want to look at like the table perhaps to see if there's some sign of the black ooze. Like perhaps they were all eating it. Okay, so Ictrude is examining the table. Yes. Okay. Um, Allard is trying to crowd in to look because this is like, you know, he's only read about this in this stupid book and is really interested to see what the actual thing looks like. Okay. So Trude's kind of approaching on the table. Chris Ben's coming in holding the candle off. But you said on the side, Chris Ben's curious about the uh, the swords and the shield on the wall, right? Yeah, so okay. maybe two. Yeah, perfect. Uh, Is Alar going to try to jump in in front of Ruby Net? Uh, uh, not charging <laughs> in, kind of, yeah, probably. Okay. Is this Robinette? actually curious? Ruby Net, do you allow that? Uh, Robinette is is sort of gone introspective ah. and is sort of quietly uh, humming a hymnal, uh, or a, a hymn, um, that she, a very simple sort of peasant hymn, uh, that she knows, uh, sort of gently, sort of, uh, rocking, uh, the, the, the censor back and forth, but seems lost in thought. And so Ella kind of quietly oh, by. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, <laughs> just, uh, the graceful elf dish, dashes, yeah, yeah, uh, no. and, uh, excuse me, come on, so Janon, you are Janon the soothsayer is behind former maybe perhaps former soothsayer is behind uh, Robinette who's who's quietly um, singing to herself. Okay, uh, uh, well, if you're not going in, I, I suppose I'll shuffle past. Okay. Um, I want to go in and look for a candle. Okay, so you're going to torch or something. Okay. Um, Ictrude, um examining the table in the light of Crespin's candle. Um, you see that it is, um, it's, it's set. There is, um, there are place settings and running down either side of the table, it looks like, um, you know, plates the like of which you may have seen momentarily in your life, but like fine um, porcelain plates, right? Not like the kind of rough stuff that uh, people back in the village, like people back in the village mostly use like wooden plates, right? These are like, these are like um, kiln fired, um, plates, um, uh, candlelight glitters on silver knives and forks, and each place setting has a crystal goblet set at mm -hmm. it. And all of these things are covered in dust, and there's, um, you know, fine uh, cobwebbing over over a lot of it. But you don't see any sign of like black mold or slime or anything Rotted like food, that. food, anything like that, or like a no, meat? no, no food at all. It's like the table was set for guests, and that and. Um, but the skeletons were clearly seated there. Yeah, that's right. Crespin, you see um, from your vantage point, the shield had been removed from the wall and um, underneath the shield um, are still, where the shield was, there's like a space on the wall where the, you know, where the dust around yeah. the shield um, remained. And underneath that in these um, metal brackets are a pair of crossed swords. Which look like long swords, not short swords. Long swords. Long swords. Ooh, okay. Which is the size of uh, Verite, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And in uh, Freebooters, uh, damage is not by class, damage is by weapon. Correct. Yeah. Agreed. So a uh, short sword does 1d6, a long sword does 1d8. Gotcha. Um, well, I, I think Crespon is going to uh, sheet the sword and try to pull out one of those, uh, one of those swords. Okay. Yeah. Great. So you. 
step over to the wall. Mm -hmm. um, illuminating a little bit more of the room. Let's see if I can do this and see if this works. Doink. Yeah, that works. All right. Um, yeah, so you, uh, you know, holding the candle in one hand, you reach up and um, uh, uh, it's surprisingly light. Um, given that it's a you know a, metal, a thing of metal relative to the weight of your short sword, it's 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 lighter. It's not as it doesn't appear to be as, as finely crafted as Verite, but it's a it's a you know a well made steel sword. So you pull that off the wall and you now have that. Okay, great. Uh, is um, anyone else interested? Um, I think Allard has a staff. <coughs> there are no class restrictions in terms of weapons in this. That's system. right. No, nope. that's fair. Yep. We don't even have a class yet. <laughs> That's right. You don't even have a class. You know, uh, I, I, uh, unless someone else uh, would like one of these blades, I think I'm going to try to hand the other one to uh, a lard. Um, I think it's important that we all have a weapon. Yeah, no, I like it's that. It's dangerous in here. Yeah, agreed. So, so Je Jeanne, um yes, as as that is happening, and you're sort of, you know, where you are, the it's much dimmer. But as you guys is light, your eyes are adjusting. Everybody, you know, the kind of. Adrenaline is worn off, although there's still probably a fair amount of anxiety in the air. Um, over on the wall, let's see if I can use the little pointer thing. Do you guys see a little pointer? Yeah. Yeah. Neat. Oh, um, that's cool. Right around here, um, you see there's an iron um, kind of candelabra sconce sticking out from the wall with place for um, like half a dozen candles, like little flat iron rings with little spikes on them. And there are two uh, fat wax candles stuck onto that candelabra. Uh, I am going to grab both of them. One I'm going to put in the pocket of my apron. Okay. Uh, and the other, uh, uh, I'm going to ask, who has the light? Crespin? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I go over to Crespin and say, like yeah. this? Okay. So you guys are lighting the candles. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Robinette is uh, until further noticed. <laughs> uh, she's 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 uh, she's. I don't know who might be listening, but uh, she's singing this. She still has that little little light in her eye. Uh, uh, you know the 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 divine sparkle, and she's singing to herself. So I'm not sure if anyone's listening, or if they're they're busy they're busy looting. It sounds like, yeah, it sounds like everybody's intent on what the contents of the room and not really, they, in the background, they hear this faint humming. I don't know, is anybody- Investigating. Listening? I don't think they're even looting. <laughs> Jason, I moved a lard, is that, uh, is, that is that cool? Yeah, sure, totally. Yeah, I'm glad, um, I'm glad to see that you can do that on your end, that's great. So Jason, I'm, I'm wondering, um, I, think, I think Robinette may be still, um, the question is whether she's truly channeling um, uh, Don Viev? Don V Don or or if she or if she's just sort of singing singing the the peasant hymn she's remembering from her youth, um, the question is how much uh, how much inspiration is is she receiving? Um, because I have an idea of what what she might be singing, but um, so I the don't question know is the this question is very is, mysterious. Your 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 question as a player is at this point what is Robinette's connection to the divine force of Donovan? Yeah. Um, boy. Well, let's see. What Donovan is and Donovan, is Donovan trying or is Donovan? Because I kind of feel like, given what's happened so far, the 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 kind of way that Donovan that uh, Robinette rose to the occasion, mm -hmm. the way that she turned the skeletons back, um, I kind of feel like that's kind of up to you. I yeah I would I would say she's she's uh, she's got something uh, something still um. yeah so this childhood this hymn from childhood is maybe more than just a, a kind of a comforting recollection but maybe uh, a a a um, inspired um, uh, an inspired tune that perhaps speaks to speaks to the present and perhaps to the future. Great. We yeah. somehow come up with two singing characters because that's just <laughs> driving me crazy. That's going to entertain the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, only you, Swander. Um, uh, okay, so uh, uh, great. And, and we hear that sort of. So, and also at this point, Robinette is basically in darkness, right? Because the candles have moved away. So, right. Robinette is now um, 
um, and perhaps not feeling at all, you know, afraid or about that, but that's the situation. Yep. Uh, Chris Matt, you see the glimmer of more uh, weapons hung on the walls further into the room. Uh, comrades, let's uh, let's uh, move forward. Um, so, I, I'd like uh, Chris Bond would uh, will be slowly moving forward. He's got uh, one of the long swords uh, in his uh, right good hand, and left hand's got a smaller candle. What we had before. Okay. Uh, Lard's got uh, a long sword in one hand uh, and is um, looking around thinking, frankly, this Saul seemed more fabulous in the book and in his imagination, and the reality is a little dingier, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> but, you know, trying to, 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 to be observant and uh, uh, look, look at things. So uh, what do we got? Um, yeah, so further along the wall, there's more, another shield and two more swords. down. Are there any down more the candle sconces? There are sconces um, on this side of the table as well, in, in between the, um, the mounted uh, weaponry. Um, no, just, but they're empty. There's no, no candles in them. I, so I can give you a candle. Extrude well, no, out. I have a candle. I just wanted to start lighting all the candles that I could find in the room and lighting the place up. Got it. Maybe Got we it. should put a couple in the, the sconces if the, our candles would fit. Uh, also, Jason, I'm, if there is any uh, armor that would also like, like, Ictrude has a shield, but she's worried about. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, right now, there's no armor in this dining room. Um, and you guys are going to be making your way south along the table there. Yeah. Sort of quite, sort of still as like cautiously. Should we be moving our guys or are you moving our guys? Um, either way. I mean, I guess since we need sort of keep. I'll, I'll, I guess, yeah, go ahead. And I like so, looking at it in Zoom so I can see all your faces. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's what nice. I'm doing, too. Yeah, that's uh, nice. Uh, Chris Bond would like to uh, grab a shield, if he could. Yep. Since he got uh, cut up the last time. Yep, yeah, go yeah. ahead and mark that down. I okay. think it's very wise to carry a, sh a shield here. And this um, dining table. Well, I pretty much have a candle and a jug of holy water. So, oh, my God, yeah. the table vanished. Sorry, I don't really I was... have a place for a shield. It's haunted! It's haunted! <laughs> That's the drawing tool. Allard is interested in any historical kind of things, portraits on the walls, uh, a sense of things that would be either expected or unexpected in the, the room and just the sort of the maison scene. Yeah, um, no portraits. It appears to me that the decoration of the room is um, purely these wall sconces and the, um, the shields and swords on the wall. Um, there's kind of like, like there's a kind of, um, the, uh, the floor is tiled and the, um, there's a wooden, um, I don't remember, it's not like wainscoting, it like comes actually pretty high up, like almost shoulder height, the kind of wooden layer. Oh, yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Whatever you call that. And then the walls are stone above that. Um, yeah, so there's what appears to be one more set of swords and a shield um, at the, near the end of the table. And this is the point, Crestman, where, um, you see the candlelight catch the edge of one of the skeletons right there. Oh, yeah. And it's just kind of standing there, um, uh, sort of sw swaying slightly, um, facing you. It's not making any move, but it's kind of like, you know, just sort of like stoic. The, the moment the, the light hits the skeleton, uh, Robinette begins to move into the room. <laughs> and Done. Done. the Done. the sway of the, the skeleton, um, maybe she gets she gets louder as she comes in. Her uh, footsteps? Or the song. The song. The song. Uh, and the, the skeleton swaying uh, seems to be uh, the metronome to whatever tune she's <laughs> What does this song sound like? With the Mark says, <laughs> We are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, lived and fought, and now we lie in leisure manner in darkness cry. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from falling hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep though black roots grow in leisure soil deep below. What the hell? 
So Robinette, I assume, is pushing her way past the, yep. pushing her way through the crowd and then up alongside Crespin. Mm-hmm. Uh, if nobody I, else... I whisper to Crespin. Yes, Jamal, go ahead. I, I whisper, I knew she was going to say that. <laughs> I'm gonna step. Ictrude's gonna step back for this clearly, okay. like possessed, like holy person here. Okay, Robinette moves to the head of the pack there, um, and she she begins to to approach the approach the skeleton. Ooh, ooh! While everyone is distracted, Alard is gonna try to promote that last shield off the wall onto his left arm. Okay, so he's coming down here. Yep. And yeah. Oh, so is there a crunk, crunk as you try to remove that from the wall? Unhook it. Robinette strides. As you stride towards it, it takes a step back from you into the darkness. Nice. Um, if it's obscured, she she sort of slows and stops and just continues to sort of... I'll, I'll keep going herself. down to provide the light of my candle. Okay. Behind Robinette. <laughs> Um, all right, then she, then she begins to, to continue oh, to... there's two. Seems oh. quite dangerous. And she continues forward, singing the song. The lady will protect us. With the, 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 the holy water sprinkler light. in one hand. Is there anything in the other hand? Uh, let's see. In the other hand, um, her, maybe, I'm trying to think. I don't think she has her pole. <laughs> at this point. I think that's probably stowed. No, I think I think it's I think it's really just the sensor. Okay. Oh, so just a bare hand and the and the holy water sprinkler. Yeah, maybe, maybe well, right. Uh, but so just holding hand, it, not swinging it or anything, just sort of ch chanting and holding it. Chanting right and yeah. and sort of slightly swaying in step as well. And um uh, now that the the additional skeletons are revealed, uh sort of again sort of moving toward them. Um the same to me, to you, are somber days and gay, though joyous dawns the rosy morn and bright, because our dearest love is gone away, within my heart, within your hearts, is melancholy night. Uh, and sort of jabbing her censer at the, at the skeletons. Like uh, a, like a, like a, all of it, like a kind of, like emph a brand, emph like emphasizing a, sort of, the language, uh, the, the language, yeah. yeah. At, at each of them individually or kind of a sweeping gesture to kind of like, you know, open a swath or, or, you know, she's picking them, she's picking them at random to focus on who knows okay, what's okay. inspiring her okay. <laughs> to do so. And you're striding kind of into their midst. Yeah. Okay. And Jeannot, I assume is continuing to stay close by providing light. Yes. Okay. okay. I think we're uh, we're certainly all kind of shuffling up uh, behind. Uh, okay. I, Extrude is going to say, "We don't have to come this way. <laughs> this is very dangerous. We know what these skeletons can do. There's a whole other wing to the chateau." Extrude, <laughs> be of good heart. We must purge this place. Exterminatus in French. <laughs> So Bob, what um, what that was um, press bomb, by the way? Yes. Uh, what is uh, Robinette's goal here? What's Robinette trying to accomplish? I I think Robinette at this point um, is is her countenance is one of the the uh, disappointed school school marm. These are these are not to her sort of frightening visages. These are these are wayward souls sort of trapped here. And uh, if she has to destroy them to set them free, she will. But she is advancing on them to drive them out, and uh, uh, hopefully to, to free them. Okay, and to drive. I don't, them I don't think it's malice, right? To yeah, drive to, them to drive them further from this room. From the room, okay. So trying to kind of herd them, uh, it generally away from you and through. If yeah, is that exit. is that a um, is that what we see? Not a doorway, but a little a little portico, something like. I mean, I guess we wouldn't we wouldn't see. There actually is some light coming in that, <laughs> and some jazz. <laughs>
Is that some light, some light jazz. <laughs> some jazz. This is actually the next song I'm going to be singing. Ooh, dooby daba. Hey. <laughs> yeah, there's actually some light um, coming in that window over there. That's connected. You see that? Okay, so and just actually, a little. That would a little, be the same uh, for these guys too. One of the little the arrow slits. So you're going to sort of uh, yeah, it's, it's more of an arrow slit exactly. Uh, just con just continue then to push them toward the the south. Okay. Um, okay, at this point, you're going to need to, um, yep. it's either negotiate, right? Because your goal is to, yeah, yeah it's negotiate. Um, so, and I, I think you're, you're using, well, I don't know, is it strength or charisma? Last time it was strength. Yeah, I think, so... it, I think it's still, I think okay. it's still strength. Okay. Can I give her an assist somehow with moral support or something? Yeah, I heard you say, what was that thing that Janon said? Like, uh... that's, that's right, Janon. Oh my goodness, a fellow believer, right? Yeah, have, faith, yeah, yeah, yeah. have faith, I heard. But, but Dean, yes. what was that thing you said as she came past? You said something like, the lady... The lady will protect us, the yeah, lady of yeah, light. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. So, yeah, how does, in this instance, as Robinet uh, continues forward, what does Janon do to um, support that? Um, I begin humming along with her. <laughs> you remember this song, too? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I'm winging it. You know how to, very, you very can pick busy. up a tune. Yeah. Okay, great. So you get an extra plus one for the help of Janon there. All right, cool. um, and uh, what's your strength modifier? Nothing. Okay. So it gives you a plus one. All right, here we go. Ooh, not good. Five. Yes. Five with the, okay. Burn that luck. Um, so, oh, oh, yeah, luck. Can I, I can bring it up to a six. That's right. Yeah, but a six is still. Oh, it's still six. You need to get to still. a seven. Yeah, you have to get to a seven. Can I burn a luck for her? You can't burn more than one luck on a roll. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was dice. one luck per person. But. Uh, so maybe, Rob, uh, yeah, so no. Jason, you go ahead. Um, first of all, Mark. Um, strength yep. on, your, on your character sheet. You haven't done that already. Um, you uh, sort of stride forth, Genon, right behind you. Um, they fall back. The candlelight reveals more. God, it's a little hard to get a hang of this. What? More skeletons. Um, you sort of are doing that, and they're kind of you're we got successfully. Seven of them. You got seven of them. That's correct. <laughs> and you notice, you know, actually, Crest Fan, or no, maybe it's Alar with his uh, academic background. Notice that there are six place settings on this side of the table. Ah, um, Alar actually would like also to make an observation. Is there any way to like identify by dress or moldering remnants anything about the status or identity of of the? donors of these bones or the original possessors of these bones? They there? certainly seem like from your time in the city, they seem like um, uh, upper class, if not nobility, for sure. Wow, yeah. Yeah, okay, so like, this could be Duke's family. Yeah, it could be our guests of a similar social class. Gotcha, yeah, okay. definitely. Um, so Rebinette gets here and they're kind of shuffling back. And then um, this one here lunges at Janol, um, uh, and the rest of them lunge at Robinette. Yep. Oh God! So you know you first. Okay. <laughs> You're wearing a jaunty hat now. <laughs> <laughs> I got rid of the the cigarette. So uh, what should I do? What should I do? Don't smoke, kids. Uh. So a so you've got the candle. You've, you're humming the tune, and um, the skeleton looked like it was backpedaling. It took a step back, and then all of a sudden, it kind of like lurches forward, um, uh, looking like it's just gonna like tackle you. Uh, okay, I take a step back. I just try Say, to Lady of Light, protect me. <laughs> and you're just trying to step out of the way backwards. Yeah, okay. to Great. not get tackled by a skeleton. Good idea. Make make a saving throw with Dex. Hey, Jason, can I add to that by saying Ictrude like lunges forward, saying, "Retreat, retreat from the room," and reaches out to grab onto Jeanette or no Jeanon to. Jeanon. Like, pull him back out of the way of danger because yeah, that sounds closer good. to me yep uh, i'm afraid i fear robinette's days are done but uh, they, so they that's an 11 plus all uh, right one is a 12. okay great so uh with, with treats help help you you pull well out of the way this the this the a skeleton 
like um, slams into the table and the place setting right there at the end um, clatters off onto the ground and the plate shatters. Um, the candlelight wavers. In fact, the candlelight, your candle as you step back kind of gutters for a second before you're able to like shield it and um, hold on to it. Robinette, what do you do? <laughs> I can't, I wish I could see all five of us. I can't, can only ever see four people. Uh, switch from uh, uh, gallery view to speaker view. Or okay, maybe, yeah, click speaker view, right? The, so I, so. Right, you're in speaker view, but if you click on it, it'll go to gallery view and show everybody. So Robinette uh, is, is truly shaken by this uh change change of events this uh, and i think when the moment the one went for uh went for Jenon, uh she glanced over her shoulder and totally the, the focus is broken uh and when she turns back to the the skeletons in front of her um uh, it's with it's with true uh fear Ooh. and uh suddenly uh and she she um she mutters, oh, my lady, no. And uh, perhaps, uh, I think still though, tries to, tries to do a wide swipe with her sensor to try and, and, and back, to back away, but to do so in a way that, that uh, gives, her, gives her the widest uh, arc she can. To try to potentially hit off. all of them, if possible. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right, I think you are um, fighting with this uh, holy water mm -hmm. sprinkler. And that is a strength roll. Yeah. And um, boy. Oh, yeah. So the way that this works when you're fighting multiple combatants is if you succeed at this roll, and I think it makes it's possible because you're, you're basically spraying water, right? Yep. It's not like you're trying to connect with a weapon necessarily. You're trying to hit right. them all with the water. Um, uh, so that totally, totally works. Um, what's at stake is if you roll a seven to nine, um, they will, you'll suffer their attack as well, mm -hmm. right? So you'll um, succeed, but suffer their attack as well. And in the case of multiple attackers, what happens is I roll damage once <laughs> and I add one to that for each additional attack. <laughs> so this would be, in this case, whatever these guys' damage die is, and then the last plus, and plus yeah. four. Okay. Yeah, you need more. Hey, maybe than they want to take a sausage. Maybe they want to take a, a, a sausage. Maybe they want to take a hostage. <laughs> sausage. Maybe they want a sausage or a hostage. <laughs> All right, that's a, that's a nice idea. I'll put that one in my quiver. Yeah, maybe yeah. they're trying to uh, abduct you. And uh, Crespon will uh, attempt to charge uh, at the nearest skeleton, shouting out at the top of his lungs, Leger, Leger. Okay, great. There we go. Okay, so a fateful roll here. Yeah. Shall we, shall we take this? Uh, no modifier, let's see. Ooh, not good enough. What'd you got? Oh my God, where's the Albear? You got a six? A six. So I can burn luck to bring it to a seven. I don't luck, know that luck, it matters. Luck would bring it to seven. I'll, well, I, I'll burn that luck for what you, it's worth. You hurt some skeletons, yeah. Um, and, okay, looking at the, all right. And then, um, so right after that, Crestman's going to charge in. Um, so our holy water sprinkler. Crestman, no, back to the door, to the door. Retreat to the doorway. So you're going to roll. Spring holy water sprinkler. Oh, geez, it's 1d8. So you're going to roll 1d8 four times and we're going to go let's see are you swinging from our perspective clockwise or counterclockwise uh we'll say clockwise okay Give these guys okay go ahead. two okay eight uh five seven Oh, that was really cool. It flickers. Like it actually cycles a little bit and then lands on a number. That is neat. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, just the four there or do uh, the... Just the four. Yeah, you can only manage four. to hit those four. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. I figured. The other one, the one after Janelle is kind of behind yep. you. So, um, okay. So, whoosh. And uh, 
Ow. Let's see the first. Let's see. Can we draw here? How does this work? What happens if I do that? Oh, it's underneath it. That's disappointing. Um, I guess I'll just remove them. Um, although maybe, forgive me as I try to understand this. Uh... <laughs> Extrude. Oh, I can hide yes. the token. Leger okay. will not be saved by faint hearts. Stout arms and the faith of Don Viev will carry us through. That is it. Wisdom of six, just pointing out. Okay, so the uh, first one, the water just um, splashes across it, sizzle. And this is, by the way, with the retreat of the candle, this is in darkness, right? right. So you're just it's rubbing that against the darkness and um, swinging that. Um, you hear Jason, I'd, 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 uh, I'd, I'd gently suggest that perhaps for those, even though cloaked in darkness, it like, like Donoviev's, uh, like, like drops of honey flowing out from the sensor and sparkling <laughs> in the darkness. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. There's a light show of the, of the, <laughs> the golden, the golden, uh, mm -hmm. don't say uh, that word. Don't say it. <laughs> the golden <laughs> job. Okay. I mean, that wasn't going to, I wasn't. Ah. Um, they, and then the rest of you just hear this, uh, they sort of fall upon, ah, I mean, it, um, goes down under this, uh, mass of, uh, of bones. Um, and Robinette, you suffer one. Two, my lady, my five, lady. Five points of damage. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How dead are you? Absolutely dismembered. <laughs> yeah, you can't take a shot in this. Absolutely not drawn or quartered at the same time. in pieces. Mm. So, uh, oh, my God, you have two hit points. Yeah. Our funnel is a funnel. <clears throat> It is now a funnel. Yeah, I, w I was wondering when we'd have a casualty. It's been three sessions. <laughs> That's the problem of going four sessions before one of your funnel characters. <laughs> you, think, you think maybe, yeah, they might yeah. last longer. Um, so Robinette, uh, so, uh, there's no scream, right? Robinette just sort of, my lady. <laughs> yeah, and then just, just, ha, right. Just, you you hear the, the, the clank of the, of the holy water sprinkler on the tiled floor. Yep. Um, Janon's got the guttering candle. There's the, the the one skeleton kind of half on the table, and then we're cutting back to um, the other side here. Oh, oh before whoa. we go, can uh, Chris Fong push the charge in to take a swing? Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, skeleton? sorry. Yeah, actually, by the time when Chris Fong gets there, um, he he sort of uh, uh, strikes a pile of bones on the floor. Okay. Um, the skeleton no longer standing. The one that he was going after. Gotcha. Um, but you hear, there's like, you know, there's still like, it's in the midst of this horrific sound of the <laughs> and Robinette um, uh, collapsing underneath these. Uh, gurgles her last. Yeah, gurgles, gurgles her, last. her last. So Crispin essentially like swings at space, right? Okay, gosh. Uh, collapsed. Though in his mind, if you will forgive, uh, Crespon is fairly sure that, you know, it's uh, his inherent righteousness that has uh, assisted him. <laughs> you know, he's so, he hit it so hard, it just vanished. Yeah, 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 clearly. He was instrumental in that. Uh, by the way, and just for the record, Allard did not move. Allard did not what? Move. He didn't move. <laughs> he was just sword shield. He's like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. nope, not doing it. But he's armed he's now. Armed. Great. Um, back in the bedroom, also in darkness there is a little bit of um light coming in from that window over in the corner there so i guess there is a little bit of dim light in here some kind of light um yeah so Oivan, you are under the bed and the grasping the hands of this uh uh thing so what did you call it the widow the mold widow the mold widow <laughs> perfect the mold widow is uh grasping it oh Yvonne actually had gotten a hand on your ankle a skeletal yeah, hand so it has a has a like a brittle hand on my ankle? I mean, I don't know if you have the wherewithal to analyze she, the... <laughs> she was on the bed and then rolled uh, to the opposite side and crawled under the bed to grab Oivan? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think that's right. So her legs are still sticking out? The weird... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just wanted to establish that. 
Yeah, there, she's, there, well, she's kind of like, she came off the bed, kind of, I remember she kind of hit the wall. Yeah. And then fell to the floor. And now she's kind of scrabbling after. Um, and again, I mean, maybe there's like a faint, like a air, like a wheezing sound almost, but it's almost silent. And then in the darkness, Ivan feels something scraping at his, you know, he feels mm -hmm. something get a hold of one of his ankles. Well, I am screaming for help from my, okay. my fellow villagers. Okay, and I have a, um, a moment of indecision. Do I run after Boris in the dark? Do I help Ivan? And I swear under my breath, and go running back to to help Oivan. Okay. Um, and the plan is, I see the legs sticking out from under the bed, and I jump up and down, stomping on them. You don't see them because it's dark. Oh, yeah, you, you can't. And, and Gabri, you you kind of come, you basically bump into Gabri coming back into the room. Okay. Can you guys remind me what happened? Why did he put the candle in the? He was trying to light the lard to create more fire, or perhaps even a fire bomb. Is that right, Bob? That is correct. Yeah, trying to create right. a little bit of a um, and um, rolled. Uh, it was a luck yeah. roll and rolled a. Um, that's right. We all realize that not how well. lard works. Well, you have to have high quality lard, and you know what? In in uh, what's it, is this Leger Village? Whatever yeah, it is, yeah. yeah, the lard very low quality. <laughs> Sorry to say. I think Dean looked up the various flammable properties of different kinds of lard. Yeah, I did, like, you know. and and I was skeptical about the entire idea of lighting. <laughs> you look very skeptical with those. The thing is, I'm a very I'm yeah. Professor Wolf. I was just going to say. So, uh, yeah, Rob. So I will attempt to test my theory as to whether this is a brittle wrist and kick at the wrist, attempting to break it, break the grasp. Okay, great. Love it. Um, yeah, so strength. Let's give us a big go of strength. All right, Havon is strength six. Oh. He's got a strength of six? <laughs> yes. Not his specialty, so a minus one. Dump stat. Uh, um, <laughs> They're I all dumb to, stats. I have, <laughs> well, true. <laughs> yeah, Hoi Vaughn doesn't have much going on for him. In fact, nothing. His charisma is even a seven. Okay, so... <laughs> Come on, Hoi Vaughn! But he rolled a five. So that is a four. Uh, I, you know, I said that... I asked if there were brittle wrists. I actually have brittle ankles. <laughs> <laughs> he just he yanks off your foot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, really so you make a malnutrition. Good. Oh my God, we're all malnourished. That's why we have such low strengths. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, now that makes sense. Um, so you give a panicked um, um, uh, kick with your feet, and that um, uh, right when your you know your legs at full extension, the other hand comes up and grabs you, basically same leg on the knee. So now she's got a hand on your ankle and a hand on your knee, and she's actually pulling your slight form back under the bed, Gabri and Jaspar, what do you guys do? Uh, I can't see, but I hear things scrabbling. So uh, I go up, I, I run up to the bed. The, the, the plan remains, I don't know. You're gonna I mean, try to I, Yeah, jump. Jason, is this like a- I wanna stomp like a, on anything sticking out from under the bed. Is this is like an oak like, four poster or is this or is this like a pallet? Like what are we- It's talking? a four poster, yeah. Four poster. By the way, I have uh, the uh, doe skin elf slippers on. <laughs> That's true, you do. In, in case, I don't know, I they, they, they have any effect on uh, mold ladies. They don't sound like they'd be very dangerous. To st they sound like slippers. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand, but I'm I'm hoping you know the elves have imbued them with something or other. Um, <laughs> like sleeping magic. Uh, more like uh, uh, anti evil. Oh yeah, anti evil. Um, the whole um, thing. So yeah, I'll Gabri. Step on it, it'll I think dissolve. I think Gabri, I, Gabri. I don't know that the light would be sufficient to sort of see where this this figure is. But I think if there, if if Hoivan is screaming um, or yelling, then I think that's enough to sort of screaming uh, to to sit, to zero in on that. And Gabri would go over to try and um, to to grab at Hoivan and to okay. pull him out. Got it. So uh, Gabri's moving towards the far side of the bed. Jaspar um, dashes 
towards the edge of the bed and jumps. Yeah. Um, like you can make out in the dimness, you can make out the, the, the strange uh, uh, kind of diaphanous uh, uh, cloth, like moldy cloth yeah. on this thing. And you're like, whatever. And you jump up in the air and come down on it. You don't have to roll for that. Okay. Um, uh, Gabri, come, so when you come down on it, I'm trying to think here. It's halfway into the bed. So it's basically, it's, it's pelvis and leg bones are sticking out from under the table. Are you trying to like land right on the pelvis? Yeah, sure. I want to crack it. Okay. <laughs> so you jump up and uh, uh, come down. And there's like, <laughs> your feet like crush it to the ground. And then there's like a, <laughs> there's a puff of yellow um, dust. Mm. Uh, oh, wolf, the wolf uh, does not look happy about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> so a puff of yellow um, dust kind of fills the air and you have to make a constitution saving throw oh I have constitution out the wazoo do you? yeah <laughs> I got a 14 constitution that's by the forager uh, oh and as a forager you have a sudden realization that these are spores of some kind okay that won't help me he's inhaled a spore or two in his day it's uh, really <laughs> worse the, the resistance he's built up the tolerance he's probably trying yeah, to sell tolerance. worse to people uh, <laughs> why did my thing go away i don't know um don't don't you have don't didn't you pack your little muslin muslin face covering <laughs> isn't that something you, you always have? take with you into the woods you always yeah. have that with the wood <laughs> balls. six Come on now you got a six um, Oh yes, goodness. I did, and I will burn a lock to make it a seven. Okay. Woo. I tell you what, this this Albert program. Okay, so you <laughs> jump. You get a puff of, to hit puff of spores. Him. You've crushed the pelvis and separated it from its spine. Um, so now, as Oivon um, comes on the other side of the bed, Gabri reaches down and grabs and starts to haul him out, and the thing is still holding onto your leg, so you're pulling the top half of it with you out from under Ooh. the bed. Yeah. Um, Dean, roll 1d4. Oh, actually, with a plus one, it'll be seven uh, without burning the luck. I'm sorry. I, th I, th I thought I was rolling strength. Oh, because of your constitution. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you don't, don't need to burn the luck. And roll okay. uh, 1d4. A d4. Okay. Three. Okay, you take three points of constitution damage. Ooh. Ooh. Well, three. that's not good. And you start to, um, like, the, the spores, like, fill your lungs, and you start to cough and hack, and um, you're kind of uh, uh, momentarily <laughs> stuck, bent over, um, just uh, uh, unable to breathe because of these things. What, okay. what, what is constitution damage? Um, on your character sheet, you'll see there's a maximum, a current, and then the modifier box. And so uh, 14 constitution, he now has an 11 constitution, effectively, so his modifier okay. changes. Got it. Um, okay. Any of your abilities can actually take damage depending on the source. And when we burn luck, we don't. We the current luck goes down one, right? Yep. It doesn't. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Rob, like for instance, if you're you're engaged in some really strenuous activity for a long period of time, you might take some strength damage, or if you suffer, you know, nerve damage, it might be taken out of dexterity. That kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> okay, so Gabri, you've managed to haul Yvonne out from under the bed. Yvonne, um, you're looking down and you see that the, it, when you look down, you see the face of this thing and the dim light that's filtering in from that um, window in the corner. And it's like um, a veil of um, this uh, wispy yellow stuff kind of trailing off of its, the skull. Um, and its uh, its mouth is a kind of open, and it's grasping your leg, and it's trying to basically like haul itself further up onto your body. Oh, I, I want to scramble to to try and um, get out of this room into the light outside. Oh, okay. Like go for the door. Yeah. Like and you like, got. I have to crawl because it's got my legs. Um, well, you got spars. I mean, Gabri's helping you, right? Yeah, I'm I'm hauling you at this point. Yeah, so I think. To get out there uh, swiftly, that'll be, um, it's not like a heavy thing, so it's just going to be dexterity and you get plus one for having, um, or you could have uh, Gabri roll um, to, to haul you. I'm so, very slight. 
<laughs> so you get a plus one for slightness. <laughs> yes, right. you, you get a plus one. It could go either way. It might. It just might depend on what ability you want to use, right? So for I found that would be Dex for um, for Gabri, it would be strength. Yeah. I I clutch his chest and I look up into his eyes and I say, <laughs> "Carry me out, <laughs> save me." Oui, Monsieur. Um, very well. I shall I shall roll for strength to uh, to deliver to deliver my new companion unto the light uh, with a plus one. You said, uh, "Yeah, for the help." Yeah. Uh, nine plus one is a ten. All right. Ooh. Oh no! Sorry, a, a nine. Yeah, nine plus one is a ten. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yes. boom! You burst through the door onto the the steps here, dragging Oiva and half of the creature behind you. Um, the um, so you uh, you bust open the door and into that you know it's like um, it's like it's kind of twilight outside. It's not like bright sun or anything like that. Um, yeah. And as you're doing that, the thing, well, actually, you're doing it so quickly that it doesn't manage to get like a further grip on you. So it's just kind of like holding on for the ride. As it, <laughs> it's it's as it, skidding and bouncing along. It's like skidding and bouncing along and leaving like a trail of yellow dust behind it as you uh, drag it out the door. Um, I have a, a rat knife. I will, um, as I, as. Um, he pulls me out into the courtyard. I want to know what distinguishes a rat knife from <laughs> other a, knives. It is a rat knife. Well, I was going to say, sorry, I wasn't quite done oh, there, but as, oh, the, oh, as, yeah. as you drag it into the light, um, it's, its hand, um, the top hand kind of like slides back and you, um, the yellow dust starts to kind of like uh, fly off of it. Um, so you're revealing wow. the kind of bare bone underneath and it, um, it, it, it kind of uh, shakes for a second and then like loses its grip and as you cross the threshold, it, it's a uh, rib cage catches on the, the, where the threshold comes up um, and it kind of flops there and the, um, the yellow moldy stuff um, uh, kind of fl flows back from the open door, from the sunlight, dim as it is. Um, and oh, now wow. the skeletal thing is like um, on the, um, sort of half across the threshold, gabriel has got you in his arms, you're looking back, um, uh, it's no longer clutching me. It's it's, it's kind of lost its grip. Well, I, I'll say like one. It's one hand is just on your ankle, but it's not holding tight. It's just sort of on your ankle. Is okay. this a bond, Jason? Have I have we just formed a bond? Uh, I hope so. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll certainly let you uh, roll Would for you, it. We have, <laughs> yeah, sure. We have to roll for the bond. I forgot. Well, I know, but I I just rolled. So here, let's, let's well, hold on. You need it. You need to have a moment where yeah. So what's the moment? Yeah. What's the moment? Um, uh, <laughs> As 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 you hear uh, Jesper hacking and coughing. While they're <laughs> having a moment, I get out of the cloud. <laughs> I say, "You, you came back for me. You, you didn't go after the dog. You came after. You came back for me, the rat catcher. Thank you." And I bury my head in his uh, elfy chest. I I could not leave you, mon frere. Nice. Okay. Great. Uh, You're happy with your moment now. <laughs> Either one of you can roll there. Who, the rat catcher, yeah, hey, rat catcher starts rat to play in the background. Oh, come on. Just 2d6 straight up. No, no right. modifier. We're rolling it. That is only a five. <laughs> <laughs> the elf it's a, okay. I'm looking for the dog. So mark XP. You get an experience point. No, yeah, that's fair. Um, and the other person describes how the conversation goes poorly. <laughs> <laughs> um, you must make amends on their terms before you can keep company with them again. So, Gabri, wait, I remember wait. this happened with Gabri and LR too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Gabri is so hard to please. Um, he's he's looking. He's he's thinking that the experience this moment. He's looking down at the rat catcher's earnest eyes, and. <laughs> What is there? Is there just a a uh, what instantly popped into my head is that he he has a very large unsightly mole or something just on his face. It's very it's, curly hair. Okay. <laughs> and and I'm thinking to myself, it almost looks like rat whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> Good heavens. And I'm thinking to myself, in the, in the midst of this moment, I'm not even hearing the words. He's now telling me more about his life <laughs> and his, his most earnest desires. And I'm thinking, is this, is, it, did, he, did he grow this because he's a rat catcher? Or did this, is this what spurred him to become a rat catcher? 
<laughs> You've saved a rat. Let me get right down to it. So his words, oh, yeah. whatever it is that Oivan's saying, kind of like fades into the background. <laughs> like a wah, 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 wah. I just, and you're just focused it on just that. just doesn't hit. It just doesn't land. Will you two quit faffing around out there? Yeah, oh so Jespar God. staggers over, co coughing up the last of this uh, stuff. Well, that's, but you survived. You survived, Jasper. Yeah. Can we find a light? Does anybody have a candle? My dog. Every moment is precious. <laughs> Especially poignant coming from a wolf. <laughs> uh, we could fashion a torch. Hoivon does have a bottle of spirits. We could take some of the... Uh, uh, I look around in this room to see if there's a chair or some piece of furniture that I can uh, uh, pull a, a, a stick-like object off. There's the nightstand, which looks quite uh, delicate. Uh, okay, is there like a, a leg to it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm I pull a leg off it. Are there any sconces or, or sort of fixtures where we might expect there to be torches? There's a yeah, there's one near the door, but there's nothing in it. Oh, okay. And the bed, yeah. does does the bed have a bed moldy old bed clothes or something? Like blankets <laughs> yes, and stuff? Yes, yes. Can I can I rip a piece off and, and wrap it around one end? So you notice that the bed is covered in this yellow mold. Ooh, no. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> I mean, you uh, might be able to carefully remove some without creating a cloud. I don't think it's worth it. I just okay. gagged up on a bunch yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, is there any other cloth curtains on the windows? Anything? Uh, no. The only thing, well, yeah, unless you want to make a luck roll. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Yeah, I can go over to one of these other windows. Like, there. Okay, I take my sack. I okay. have a sack. Yeah. And oh. I wrap it around one end and say, uh, 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 who whoever, who has spirits? I, I douse it with my bottle of spirits. Okay, at least, great. At least half the bottle. Great. Okay. Can someone light this? Does anybody have? Yeah, so Oivan, <laughs> Oivan, do you have any thoughts before? Is this, are this are these spirits just like something you always have on you? Is it like, a, is it something that's precious to you? Where did the spirits His come flask. from? His flask. Who makes uh, He is, so Oivan's uh, attributes are steadfast hedonist. Okay. So I think he's always got something, some kind of enjoyable uh, okay. substance with him. All right, so we got this uh, nightstand leg wrapped in a in a burlap sack and uh, doused in um, spirits. And uh, can we light it? We we haven't had a problem with. I assume we have tinder or, or uh, the spark. Well, well, yeah, flint of some sort. Like Matches. Do, uh, do you? Does it say so on you? No. <laughs> but I, I, I don't think have. anybody had anything to light the candles. That's true. In other place. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll make a Gabri will make a luck roll. To see if you have some uh, uh, some sort of fire starter. Hey, you could also, you could also, it could also be an established roll if you want to say like, oh, but I always have. Right. Uh, Gab Gabri as an elf has a peculiar elvish habit of uh, smoking this this dried chopped up leaf uh, rolled up into thin pieces of I don't know of uh, uh, of, of of sheep intestine I don't know uh, <laughs> and and so he he's he's sort of fumbling to to have one of these small uh, uh, smokes that he's putting together, and he has a little, uh, a little fire starter that he usually carries with him, just a t a t the tiniest, tiniest bit of flint. So he feels around for that. Um, yeah, is it still on him? Yeah, established to see if that's that's there. <laughs> or luck, it's up to you. Whichever looks better to you. He sure doesn't. It fell off him. <laughs> Not yet. Well, and maybe when you dashed across the courtyard. Yeah, and and in fact, all of his all he has are the uh, the sheep intestines. None of the none of the the leaf at all. None of the fire starter. None Just... of the leaf. Oh, even worse. Okay, great. So no fire starter, and we're gonna. Uh, well, I mean, I, I'm a forager. I live in the woods. Uh, sometimes I get caught out there. I would have flint and steel. Uh, can I establish that? To yeah, yeah, absolutely, sure. Yeah. Okay. What, what, do, I, what do I roll? Two d six plus your intelligence modifier. Uh, okay, minus one. Two d six minus one. Great. Kevin, I, I thought you had bought the uh, the app. 
and used uh, the Wolf app on your. Uh... Uh, only practical effects in this shop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I get a seven. Ooh. To establish that. You're right, but there's a caveat or complication of the judge's choosing. Um, yeah, so you do, you, you pull it out and you're going to um, use this flint and um, steel, this little ch piece of steel and this flint, which you found from a place in the woods where you know that there's always, you know, there's like a little outcropping where you can find your flint. Yeah. Um, and you're gonna, the, the, um, the, the cost here is going to be when you when you strike that flint, it's just going to break the bits. So you'll be able to light this thing, but then your flint will be spent. Okay. And you sort of look at it and you're like, oh, crap. I just have God this one. damn bit. it. Yeah. <laughs> but then you'll have a light source. Okay. We got a torch. That's okay. So to let's board. go get my dog. All right. Torch is lit. Cut back to the dining room. Uh, Jason, I was just going to say, I don't know if you need to impose some sort of penalty for my role. Uh, but it could be since uh, since I don't have my 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 leaf uh, my smokes that uh, it's going to be I'm going to be preoccupied by that. Maybe I make a minus one on my next roll, something like that. I don't. Think, I don't. I'm not going to make you miss any rolls, but that preoccupation could certainly come into place. Somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Good. Good. Good one. Um, I will make a note. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So uh, uh, Robinette has fallen in the darkness. Uh, Crespon has swung at empty air. Um, Genon and Ictrude are um, sort of face to face with this skeleton that's um, uh, against the table there. Uh, so I'm going to say, uh, Genon, what does Genon yes. do? Um, is there a, like a tablecloth or anything on, on the table? No, there's no tablecloth. Oh my gosh, you could do it. Just yank it off. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Um, what else is there anything else on the table that I can there are these place settings and there are um, some uh, empty candelabra uh, okay Maybe. I grab a candelabra and bean him with it <laughs> like throw it or swing it at him swing it at him okay that's a fight roll yeah that's the one thing I'm not good at that's a strength, strength. strength yeah Okay, so I got a plus zero. Uh, doo, 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 plus zero is seven. Good. Okay. Um, okay, so you bash it. I'm gonna give you that'll be a mm, that'll be a d three. So roll six I die divide by two round up. Okay. Uh, let's get rid of that. Uh, roll a six sided die. Five divided by two is a three. Okay, so um, uh, you go to um, uh, you swing and um, it's like reaching out to you, kind of like it's coming around the table at you, and you go to swing and it um, uh, it sort of slashes you with its uh, with its um, finger bones. Um, uh, right, like like through your clothing, it sort of tears your clothing and rips into your flesh, and then you smash off its head, like you just crack the skull right off of its body, and you take one point of damage. And I am uh, dead. Genou. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in that case, the figures go into your neck. <laughs> oh! If you decide to so if, if oh, material like a, spray, oh. as a material spray, Trude is watching as it's. Oh. As, I uh, have one. He's, I and, started and, and, out with one hit point. I, <laughs> direct pressure. The finger, the finger bones catch on the windpipe and spin him around in a circle, so the spray goes everywhere, <laughs> like a top. But this has gotten Michael Haneke very quickly. I, I <laughs> sorry, am, sorry. I am with my God because I, the day that I died, I also could. <gasps> the prophecy has come true. Yes. Oh my gosh! Wait, the day that you died, what was the? I well, you remember I, oh, yeah, I yeah, prophesied yeah, that, that he would lose his soul when yeah, yeah. Uh, he he stepped in, he lost his shoe, yeah. um, and uh, I did badly, and the prophecy was that I would lose yeah. my soul this right. day, but I lost it to God. Yes. Well, you won Pascal's wager, like a good French person. Yes. <laughs> Um, so, Genon, I mean, sorry, Ictrude and Allard uh, with, oh, and also 
uh, Janan was holding the candle, so that uh, candle hits the ground um, and is guttering. And so in this very sort of uh, faint flickering light, you guys just witness the horror of that um, happening. And you hear the sound of the candle on the striking the skull and the skull, you know, there's a moment where there's just quiet and then the skull bounces off a wall somewhere. So now Crespin is basically in darkness. Um, Ictrude and LR are in faint light. Ictrude, what do you do? We know there's a skeleton still somewhere down there in the darkness. You hear movement, yeah. <laughs> I, I, again, I, I urge my companions, back to the door, <laughs> back to the doorway. Where there's light, we'll be safe. And uh, I begin to back up, um, not looking behind me, just backing up, shield up. Shield up. Sword up. I'm, I'm, if I can reach out with my elbow, I push Allard back behind me to, and urge him back and yell out to Crespon. Crespon, to me, to me. Great. Um, uh, Kevin, what about Allard and Crespon? What do they do? Allard uh, is uh, an elf and I think would like to get that light source uh, from uh, Jeannin if he can scoop it up with his uh, shield hand. Okay. And Chris Bow. What's he going to oh, do? Oh, wait, where's the hat? Yeah. Yeah. You're both. Yeah, switch the hat. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and a plume. There we go. Got to get the plume in the shot. <sighs> you know, guys, look, Chris Bow is an enthusiast. He is, uh, has a wisdom of six. He has just seen <laughs> this wonderful friend go down uh, and in the face of whatever. And uh, Chris Bond, you know, is uh, not going to uh, shirk when the blessings of Don Vive have upon uh, them and will not uh, quail in the face of uh, unrelenting horror. And he's just going for that last skeleton. Oh, my God. Yes. Sealed out. Screaming, Leger, Leger for Leger. Don Viev, guide my hand, and he is going for it. Just don't trip on that sensor as you go. <laughs> there's a lot to trip on. There's a, there's lot, a lot to trip yeah, on. There's a lot on the of Robinette in there. But Chris Bond charges into the darkness. Yep. Excellent. So LR crouches down to pull up that guttering candle. Ictrude is like begging for people to follow her to the exit and here's in the darkness Chris Mon saying say it again Kevin what's the call oh Leger Leger for Leger uh you know Don Viev guide my hand baby will triumph this day <laughs> in French <laughs> but of course with so, a little jaunty you know I'm gonna say boy I'm gonna give you some choices here you're charging into this darkness against the final foe uh, of this room, apparently. <laughs> um, it's like either strength, which is a straight up fight roll, um, luck to stumble blindly into the right place, or um, wisdom because you're calling upon, uh, or no, Leger, you're not calling on Don of Yev, you're calling on Leger. Yeah, that's yeah, like, no, no. Like I, I mean, there's certainly a uh, yeah. religious uh, pride. Yeah. He is a. Um, what is he? He's pious. I mean, he's definitely, definitely, definitely pious. Okay, but his wisdom is only. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I, Jason, can we? Is there any way we can do anything on dexterity? Because <laughs> <laughs> everything else is like way under ten. Yeah, no, no, no. We got we as we as a staff, we have will this... guide your hand. Have no fear. Oh, you know what? You're right. <laughs> Worked out Come for on, Don Viev, guide my hand. So you're calling upon yeah. Don of Yev's yeah. aid in the darkness. Yeah, so that's going to be a wisdom roll. Isn't that like a minus two? believers are now... Well, it, it could be charisma. It could be charisma. If, like, if well, I mean, it, I think if you want to be cynical, it's luck, right? If you want yes. to say it's purely cynical. in the darkness, it is luck. It is luck. But if he's, if he's genuinely... Which would be better well, than his wisdom, I think. Oh, he's genuinely pious. I mean, he's, he's, yeah. he's, he's feeling it. Uh, he's, uh, you know... Got a wisdom of six, uh, you know, is gullible, enthusiastic. I, th I think he's going to ride this log from right down to the bottom of the ride. So, but this is another way to look at it, Kevin. So if we hold wisdom on the one hand and luck on the other hand, as Don Aviev looks down on Chris Pan. <laughs> as many people Don't have, have not tall. Is Don Aviev got a, is there the potential that Don Aviev will listen or will she potentially withhold and allow luck to run its course? That's yeah. totally, totally your call. Well, the good news is they're the same number. Oh, <laughs> they're, great. they're both six. Then here we go. Well, hold on. Before we, before we make that roll, the low wisdom, right? Wouldn't that 
in some cases mean that Crespon, you know, he doesn't always know the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. When you have a low wisdom, wouldn't you maybe listen to other people more often? You're gullible. If somebody, somebody you respect in the village, somebody who has anointed you their second in command and has given you all that, that respect, and they're urging you <clears throat> to run out of that room and come back to, to her. Wouldn't that- And stop a moving train. Yeah, Rob, I think yeah. that's- And but, I gotta but, tell you- uh, That is a nice incident to extrude the thought process though, thank you. Thank no, you. it is, it's, it's good insight. Um, yeah, uh, and, and I appreciate the, 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 uh, the lifeline uh, <laughs> for poor Crespin, uh, who is- uh, The parachute is jammed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I mean, we just saw two people go down. Uh, we're, this is a holy quest. I, I just don't see a pious, not very bright, uh, gullible guy uh, backing down from that. Even in, in the face of, you know, the darkness of the soul, Crespin is convinced of it. Now, you know, we could say, uh, you know, maybe he makes a dex roll and manages not to fall on anything. And, and uh, we cut away and he's later on holding a skull. Uh, but <laughs> you got to roll. <laughs> Wait, so which one are you doing? <laughs> I think, mm, I mean, I'd like to make a small argument that it could be dexterity to kind of stumble through and manage to like bash the skeleton with the shield, um, which is, seems to me the, the thing that would most likely have happened. Sure, um, that's more luck, isn't it? Well, I mean, he's, yeah, yeah I guess. Um, because of the, the, the jumble of stuff on the floor, we've got Robinette's body, we've got, the bones of five four uh, skeletons. That is true. <clears throat> trying to kind of find his way through that. Um, I would I would buy that. So you've got a quite a range of possibilities here. Well, let's go. I'll I'll check dexterity on it. Um, thank you for for going for that. So two dice and dex is plus one. All so right. let's see. Uh, I think I'm sharing. So let's see. Boom boom. Hey nine. It cracked. Yeah nine. Nice. Plus one. All right. You got a 10. A 10. An unmitigated success. <laughs> Don Viev protects fools who certainly rush in. That'll be, the, <laughs> that'll be the next on her. Is it goddess of the harvest of mourning and fools? <laughs> be yes. <this>. Asterisk. <laughs> One of her paragraph three and fools. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you charge, you know, you, you um, uh, just right into the darkness. And you said shield first? Shield first. So you're trying to like smash into it, yeah. knock it backwards. Um, boy, I think shield first. Yeah, so you, it connects, you hear it, <coughs> um, and then uh, um, uh, the sound of it, uh, 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 it's, it's kind of bony feet on the tiles, and then uh, a crack as it, as it runs in, as it um, smashes into something. Um, roll the d4. All right. Uh, oh, I can do that here. All right, d4. Is a three technically. Okay. Um, sorry about the. I don't know how to get rid of the other two, but it's a three. Okay. Um, so there's the smash of it into the wall, and then you uh, 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 the clatter of uh, the bones hitting the ground. Okay. And you're standing there in the darkness, and then back across the room, you see um, uh, you know a large stand up, and you see the candlelight illuminating a large space by the table. As a large turning to retreat with Ictrude, um, and uh, uh, you know you're surrounded by. Um, you don't hear anything else other than that. I, I don't know that Alard is is retreating oh, necessarily. Okay. I think Alard is is uh, standing there probably. Okay. Not not fearful of what is in the darkness. Well, oh God, yeah. Um, but you know, go forward, go back. The one madman charged yeah. in. The yeah. skeletons are dead. There's somebody with, with her or... dying breath. Janon says, "I knew he was going to do that." <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping Robinette's uh, final breath would have been a uh, tough crowd. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. So Ictrude Alard now has the, the light source and. Uh, uh, you heard Crespan shout in the darkness, and um, you're moving uh, away towards the faint light out along in the in that room you came from. You continue on your way, Rob. Oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about. Uh, so, I, I I still like I can see at this point because of the light. 
you are basically in darkness. Um, Alard's got the candlelight. And I'm I'm back out in the shadows, but, and I can see the the dim light from around the corner out going outside. Yeah, well, there's light coming in these windows on the um, east wall there, some faint light, and then um, through the doorway you guys entered. Um, yeah. Okay, I will go back to the doorway, and then I have the candles, so I assume I have a way okay. to light my candles. Okay. And I will light my own candle. Okay, alarm. So. Um... Crespon, are you okay? Uh, we, my phone. Um, so <laughs> I, you know, the uh, circle of light is basically where it was, right? There's no additional illumination uh, that we can see. You, so the only light right now, I wonder if there's a way, easy way for me to do this. Let's see. The only light right now is, whoa. Nope. Oh. <laughs> nope. Um, because I think Allard's going to be driven by, Allard is driven by curiosity and is going to be um, uh, going to be interested in uh, the stuff on the table, what else is in the room, the, you know, accoutrements, and maybe, uh, you know, if he can do it easily, promoting some of the silverware into his bag. <laughs> he has a bag? Um, well, technically it's his spouse, but yeah, uh, yeah, he has a shoulder bag. Okay, great. On his character sheet, written down there in black and white. Yeah, so he's he's moving along the table, um, picking up, um, yeah, just sort of like shoveling silverware. Well, and not, I mean, not like wholeheartedly, but like you know, a couple picking. Okay, just a couple. Okay. Uh, what 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 can be easily gotten? He's not a hard worker. I mean, he could take all the silverware. The soldier. Okay, if it's doable, sure. Oh, I love the light. That's great. And it, clearly, Jeannon and um, Robinette were not savable. Is that fair? Like, there's no plausible rescue to be in, done. For... Um, in full, in the full game of freebooters, there is a move where you can roll somebody over to check if they're dead. But in um, in the funnel, a villager dead is dead. Zero okay. hit points is dead. Yeah. Doesn't either Allard, I think, or Ictrude, or uh, Crispon are monsters, and if there was any chance of saving their comrades, obviously that would take precedent. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that. I mean, if a large, you know, before a large goes away, just holding the candle over those two, it makes it very clear that they're not going anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Um, the the light would uh, hit the. If, I mean, if he's collecting shiny things, the light would hit on the sensor, silver sensor. Yeah, that's true. I think I think oh. as villagers who live nearby, wouldn't we want to recover the bodies? And there would be a there's like funeral <laughs> services to to be gone to. We're not heartless murder hobos. We're zero levels. Well, yeah, I, yep. maybe Ictrude has such a, you know, Ictrude is a very proper, proper, proper human. That's right. Do you want to cut to so Crespan? What was what? What would Crespan do? But um, next, uh, Crespan would probably back towards the light, uh, you know, and probably be shouting out, "Leger, Leger, come get us, you!" You know. <laughs> some kind of, um, you know, uh, something about, uh, you know, that uh, Ictrude, come back. The righteousness of Leger has triumphed this day. Come, comrade, we must work together. Something like that. But making your way back towards the... Yeah, kind entry. of backing. Uh, oh, I can actually do this. Sort of backing up. Um, sort of, oops, back. Sorry. Ah, that's not working. Uh, there, uh, backing up to uh, where uh, the light is with a lard, but sort of glintily steely eyed, looking into the darkness, ready to strike at the enemies of Leger. <clears throat> Not probably noticing a lard too much, promoting stuff off the table, because that would uh, no doubt be offensive to uh, Chris Paul. And does LR take an interest in the? Um... The morning, the the holy water sprinkler. And the... Oh yeah, I mean, once we got all the knives and forks in the in the shoulder bag, uh, <clears throat> certainly the shiny silver thing would be worth uh, worth having. Though um, we all saw its power, right? Yeah, we all saw its power. I, I think I have the feeling Chris Bond is the one who's going to grab it. Okay. So he's uh, and, and, and you know, uh, and for Don Viev and for. Um, <laughs> No oh boy, that's not that didn't work. Um, for Don Viev and for Leger, I think Crespon will uh, put the sword away, pick up the sensor. Does sensor still have water in it? Is it still no? It's empty. I think he'll try, Crespon will you're right, you're try right. to recover the the last of the holy water and the sensor yeah. and maybe reload it if that's possible. Yeah, uh, uh, Janon had the jug. 
Oh yeah. Uh, how many uses in the jug left? Three. Yeah, there were two in um, Robinette's um, vial. So uh, regroup in the previous room. Does that make sense with all of the stuff you guys have gathered? Yeah, absolutely. So cut to um, that. And if well, Allard can see, is there anything of historical interest, or you know, that would be of interest to a historian? Um, in this in this room, not so much. Not so much. I mean, you know, there's these shields. There's three of these shields with the house house arms, the house coat of arms on them. Oh, um, you know, what? can Allard uh, just on one of the skeletons as he goes by? Can I do a knowledge roll to establish who that was? Establish who it was. You yeah. can just. You can just. Based on a skeleton. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, I'm reasonably sure this was uh, the third relative cousin of the Duke uh, of Leger. This is the. This is their coat of arms or something. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Great. You can just. You don't have to establish. Beautiful. You can tell, yeah. yeah. Ah. Well, that's too bad. I thought he would have done better. <laughs> if, you, if you're wrong, the skeleton isn't going to. Oh my God. That's right. I can be just right about it. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Um, great. So you guys all regroup in that room. Ictru, do you have any words for your companions? Um, at this moment, at this point, the bodies have been left behind, perhaps just because you needed to, like, you know, catch your breath. Oh uh, yeah, I go to Crespon and I apologize. I'm sorry I doubted you in the, that moment of, of fear and anxiety in the dark. I don't know how you did that. It was remarkable. <laughs> you really want to bond. Well, we have a bond. At least I think Chris Bond has well, a bond. you can uh, have up to three, so might as well okay. go for it. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Chris Bond is uh, – now, I'm sorry. Ictrude, let me just make sure I'm getting my uh, pronouns correct. <laughs> Ictrude is a, is a is she, her, correct? Yes. 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 Uh, Ictrude, my sister of Leger, we will triumph together. And though our faith in each other may be tested, it will win out for sure. Our faith in each other. <laughs> All right, uh, roll to keep company, Rob. Yeah. Do you, do you, I guess, do you already have a bond? We do. Or at least I have a, I have Ictrude one on my okay, character. You have one. Rob, do you have any with Chris Ben? I don't, I don't see one, no. Okay, so Chris Ben's got one with you, but not the other way around. Go ahead and roll. Yeah, one. that makes sense. Chris Ben always looked up to Ictrude. So and Ictrude maybe tolerated Chris Ben and thought he was kind of a fool, which is not wrong. We'll get a 10, I think. Oh, great. Um, so um, the conversation goes well. Play it out or summarize it, which you guys have already done. Um, and choose two from the list below. Um, you gain one bond with them. They gain one bond with you. And or, and or refresh all marked bonds each of you has with the other. So you don't have any refreshed bonds. So you each gain a bond with the other person. Oh, nice. You have a bond with Chris Bond. Yeah. And Chris Bond has two. So do you here. list that as just two bonds or a bond and I'll just put two by it? Uh, you, you draw little circles. Oh, okay. And then when you use a bond, you mark the circle. And how do you use a bond? Um, anytime. So normally, as you know, you can get plus one. You get plus one to help somebody. But if you actually have a bond with that person, you can mark a bond to get an additional mod bonus for that. Oh, very nice. And, and you refresh those have... through by keeping company is how you refresh those. So it's extra extra push for your 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 tight friends. Got it. Um, how are we doing, Rob? How are we doing? Are you tired? I mean, Bob. Sorry, are you tired, Bob? Which one, me? Yes, yes I you. am. Unfortunately, but, <laughs> yeah. are you ready to? Should we call it? I mean, if this is a natural a natural break point. Yeah, right. maybe let's go back to the guys briefly. Yeah, I'd like to know yeah. where the other room left off. Yeah, let's yeah. go back to the guys and then. Okay. I can navigate on my multiple screens here. So we've got a torch. Yeah. Right. Um, Work right on the torch. It would be nice to know how close we, or what the plan is to get the dog. <laughs> the dog went down this hall. And just yeah, so uh, Jaspar steps uh, to to just to be just to illustrate that point, steps into the hallway and sort of points in the direction which is um, south. Yes. Oh. Now with this with this brighter torch, you can see a little bit more. Uh, oh, whoops! Oh, not that. Yeah. So you're leading the way. Yeah. I'm and I'm walking quietly with my elven boots. Oh yes, and actually, it's very quiet. 
have my rat knife out and I'm not going to stop and look for any treasure along the way, which is where <laughs> I got us into trouble. That's By the sad. way, I Googled it and rat knives are a thing. Yes. Are they really? What are they? They're, they're like those, those uh, switchblade kind of things. The, they're little, I mean, I can give you a link. Oh, yeah, no, I'm just interested. I didn't I know the hear rat you. knife was a thing. Can you have the, the wolf hold a rat knife for us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's sort of a foldable blade, it looks like. That's yeah. really the... Uh, 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 uh. All right, so you get to this corner here, very cautiously, uh, quietly, holding this um, makeshift torch aloft. The passageway continues another uh, 20 feet. You see a door on the left ahead and a door right ahead. Um, this is a door right here, Okay. door. Um, you peek around the corner, holding your torch out. I'm listening for dog noises. Okay. Oh, okay. You can find answers Keepers. to see if you hear anything. Yeah, okay. Uh, what kind of role is that? Uh, that would be wisdom. Wisdom. Oh, I actually have plus two wisdom. All right. Nice. Wow. How are you not in charge? <laughs> uh... uh Let's get rid of that. And how do you roll two d6 instead of one and one? Just click the click the d6 icon. Oh twice. shit! I sorry, sorry, sorry. I just started clicking crazily. I just click. I double click it, and two pop out. That's what I've been doing. Yeah, you don't. It you don't even need to double. You can just uh, tap it once, tap it twice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I roll seven roll. plus two is nine. Okay, <clears throat> and you're listening for. For signs of dog, Boris, where are you? Malamutes hear... are actually very verbal. Okay, um, <clears throat> they might shed too. <laughs> Leave its winter coat behind. So you see, um, at the end of this passageway, there's a set of uh, double doors. Um, that there's a corner right here, actually, that's open. Your light just is not shining around it. Mm -hmm. um, these, this is a set of stairs that go up to the first floor um, from from this this point. So you're sort of at the foot of these, peering at the foot of these stairs. Um, there's like a moldering uh, carpet on the floor, um, same kind of uh, wood, dark wood wainscoting. In some places, it's kind of um, there's the sign of those like woodworms that you know they leave those little labyrinthine trails, yeah. and then stone wall above that, <clears throat> and um, you hear from the direction of those double doors. You hear. Um, yip, yip. Mm -hmm. uh, and I say to my companions, "This way, Boris <laughs> calls to us." Uh, <laughs> is that the moment where we cut it? Sure. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, we'll stop there. Right. That's great. The, right. Your dedication to the wolf, uh, Dean, is pretty amazing. I. I'm, I've like, not actually seen Dean O'Donnell tonight. I never want to go back. I know. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, but Dean, that's not that's not a statement on you. It's a statement on the wolf. <laughs> yeah, I I honestly have spent days as this wolf now doing my job. Uh, Dean, is this wolf now your first sona? <laughs> yeah, I I've been waiting oh. for someone to to call me furry. Oh, um, no, no, love, man. Whatever. <laughs> no, I, I, makes us I was expecting students to be like, my professor's a furry. Uh, um, and I mean, nobody that, does. But that has to start somewhere, right? Yeah, Maybe I don't know. It's the first step. There are, there are much more like persona things, or I could be like an anime girl or whatever. Right, there's so many possibilities. Um, okay. But but honestly, if, if they annoy me, I bring out the murder doll. And, <laughs> and they're all like, no, no, put it away, bring back the wolf. I was kind of fond of them. He was like a little New Orleans, like, um, like a diminutive New Orleans pimp. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, and, and he's like, on a street corner, yeah, exactly. Some, right. Whereas the that's wolf is in the mountains, and, yeah, it's very appealing to some of the um, people. I don't know. It, I'm the other big thing is like I can still show up for meetings in my pajamas and be the wolf. 
a right. milty nose. <laughs> my my one problem is I the wolf has no paws, so uh, I can't, can't gesture or hold things up to the camera and say, "Look at this book," or "I have this thing." And if I, you move your hands, we just don't see it. It just gets edited out. Yeah, there's just there's no rig for the hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the puppet has the, the puppet has the rig. The puppet has has hands, but they don't. Uh, there there's no tracking of my hands at all. It's just my face. Well, wolves don't usually gesticulate too much anyway. <laughs> right, so. that's right, <laughs> right. Early Pixar, but otherwise. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> all right, we're wrapping up. Um, okay. And you answer these questions three. Uh, did, did you fulfill at least one of your traits in a memorable way? Starting with, uh, uh, well, for survivors, I guess. We got uh, yeah. Crespin and LR. I, I would say Crespin, probably yes. Could you remind us of what the traits are? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, pious and uh, a liar. I think his piousness, uh, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you get XP for that. And what about Alar? Alar's traits are lazy and stubborn, and he didn't move at all when the bad yeah. stuff was happening. And then as a good grad student, moved to like take stuff off the buffet table when nobody was looking. And, and I like how you, you said, he doesn't take a lot. He just, he's, he's not, it's like putting him out. He's not gonna work at to, it. Yeah, 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 great. So you he's not gonna be XP. diligent about it. So both those guys have got XP for that. Um, uh, uh, poor Genon. Oh, Genon. Oh my God, yeah, heartbreaking, Rob, heartbreaking. I mean, honestly, Genon and Robinette, yeah. I, had, I had a lot of, of stake in those two. So. The funny yeah. thing is she's the much better roles of my two characters, but she, she whiffed on hit points. Oh, oh. But the uh, the the, the uh, prophecy is fulfilled. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah is yeah. fabulous. Yeah, I mean, but it's great. heartbreaking because, frankly, I mean, no, all love to Ictrude, but these are the two most charismatic uh, people on that side <laughs> of the mansion. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, we lost both our bard and our our our, pro our prophetess. We didn't lose our bard. Wait, did we? We didn't no, lose. You the... lost. You lost the sub bard. So. <laughs> yeah, we lost the fairy pilot. The fairy pilot who who was yeah who could sing oh, a hammer, um, could sing a hammer too but is no no elf oh my gosh I'm no, so sorry no I got your guys confused um, Mr Swander I oh no no, no, no. no but if they're both gonna sing how can you keep it straight <laughs> well that would I mean there was lots of lyrics I was why I, bother you can understand yeah. my mistake both yeah. of them yeah, yeah. exactly um, well, what happens to a bond with you had with the deceased well, it your heart it just evaporates actually or, no 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 you can use it to add anytime you act in their memory oh or i should say the next oh. time because then it goes away but you can actually use it if you're acting in a way that oh yeah chris ben has got that one in his back pocket mm -hmm. no question yeah all right um jaspar what are your traits you got them there Team. oh uh yes i am boastful and cruel didn't really right didn't really get yeah no i, I, I you did I crush to, a pelvis <laughs> i meant to be like i have to kill this thing single-handedly but uh, other people were talking, and I, I didn't say it. So I wanted to boast and, and didn't get a chance. But that's OK. There's <laughs> always next time. I mean, yeah. Um, uh, and uh, uh, so then we're down to, um, gosh, uh, Oivan has survived. Uh, what's our Oivan's trait? Oivan is uh, steadfast hedonist. I don't think so. In the other one. OK. And, and Ictrude? Ictrude is hopeful and forgiving. Uh, so she was, you know, hopeful that the skeletons wouldn't come back, but they, they were there. Uh, and she was forgiving it, like, even though she urged Crespon to come back, she didn't hold it against him that he didn't. In fact, he was magnificent in, uh, in how he handled the skeleton. Oh, yeah, great. And that's especially because he's your, he's essentially your deputy to, like, not sort of... Not you know, like beat him the right. Yeah, exactly. yeah, not, yeah, not like dress him up and down for yeah. you foolish idiot and whatever. I, yeah, totally. You get an XP for that. Um, Bob, let us mourn the passing of our, our rosy cheeked uh, fairy pilot. <laughs> she was the best of Very us. Very sad. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How are you going to explain You know, thing? like like Joan of Arc, cut down in her prime. <laughs> yes, very sad. Right. Um, and what are Gabri's traits? Uh, orderly and gregarious. So I think a corner case would be gregarious, uh, but I don't know if that really. 
<laughs> Where was the gregariousness there? Well, no, in the sense in the sense that he he went to up, but, went yeah. to the member of his community. He, he yeah, and when uh, that member conference. of the community attempted to embrace you and to to have this special moment, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you just <laughs> all you it. can think about. All I can think about is that is <laughs> that whisker, that large. Right? <laughs> He's a bit ratty, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> So gregarious. Oh, <laughs> poor old man. Uh, you make that call, Bob. I know you. No, I, 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 no. I know. Okay. Uh, uh, did uh, did you risk your life to help an ally or obtain an item of value? Crespan, you get a point. Um, um, uh, Gabri, you get a point. Jaspar, you get a point. Um, you guys all risked your lives to help. I don't think Ictrude really did, right? No, no. No, I think Ictrude was always trying to Try, back out. It, yeah, yep. Ictrude, like I was going for the the fighting defense. I was I was going to make that work yep. tonight. Yep. Didn't work. And then, um, did you witness the untimely death of a fellow villager? Hell so yeah! All yes. the people in the dining room um, get XP for that. All the survivors in the dining room get XP for that. Um, and then the last three questions are. Did you discover something exciting about the wider world? No. Same skeletons as last time. Sort of the same. Yeah, same uh, as last time. I don't know. The mold lady burst into mold when I stomped her. I was. I, I understood that it was mold. Yeah. Okay. Great. So animate mold, right? You. you got, yeah. That is something new. Okay. Great. Everybody gets XP for that. The whole gang. Everybody in that room. Uh, everybody, this, these ones apply to the whole the whole party. It's like together. Maybe later you'll recount this story to each other. Um, did you overcome a difficult obstacle in both cases? Yes. So everybody, um, everybody gets one XP. And um, did you acquire some memorable booty? You have to go to bed. I'm um, I think Good the silverware counts. All right, I'll so take it. Everybody gets XP for that, not just the person who grabbed it. Oh, nice. Okay. Going well. We're doing XP right now. All right. Can you guys tell Carson to go to bed? They Carson, Carson, go to bed. Carson, it is Carson, past go to bed. bedtime. No, it's not. Yeah, Carson, is. I'm a wolf and I will eat you if yeah, look you at don't go to yeah, bed. Look at Dean. Come here. Hello. Come here. Well, make your biggest, make your biggest, rawr. Rawr. There Wait, we go. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, hold on, hold on. So I got beautiful. buttons to push. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's actually better when you're just like that being just seen easy. as a wolf. Uh, like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's disgusting. What can you? What happens when you? Can you lean really close, or is that as close as you get? Yeah, I look down, and then it loses <laughs> Wait, my tracking. Okay, got it. So nice. Like like when I get very still, it loses my tracking. It actually tracks me better during the day. There's more light in the room. Okay, got it. I gotta go to bed. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta bed. go to bed. Or That's what we like to do. We all have to go to bed. You. Yes. Um, Dean, I, your voice is just perfect for that wolf. Right? <laughs> no, Dean the the voice Dean acting thing, Dean, is like, you know, you're a Maurice LaMarche to come. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it gets my smile. That's the kind of nice thing. <laughs> yeah, it does. And so we when I your smile, smile. Your smile is pretty nice, Dean. It is. Um, all right, thanks, you guys. Okay. Jason, thank thanks. you so much, guys. Lovely to see it's everybody. Always a pleasure. See you in one to four weeks. Get some yeah, <laughs> One to four weeks. Yeah. One to four weeks. That's awesome. All right. Good night. Good night.